Joe Biden is waging war on the U.S. auto industry with a series of crippling mandates designed to force Americans into expensive electric cars. That's just what you want. Even as thousands of electric cars are piling up on car lots, all unsold. This ridiculous Green New Deal crusade is causing car prices to skyrocket while setting the stage for the destruction of American auto production. These extreme left-wing policies are a disaster for families and consumers and are one of the main reasons the average cost of a new car is now over $50,000. Absolutely outrageous, and there's never been such a price before. These exorbitant prices are, despite the fact that Biden is spending billions and billions of taxpayer dollars subsidizing electric cars for rich people, while normal Americans can't afford to use one, nor do they even want to. Biden is killing American consumers, and he's also killing U.S. manufacturing. In an all-out attack on American-made pickup trucks, SUVs, and other automobiles, Biden doubled CAFE standards, a move that is projected to cost automakers $200 billion. By one estimate, Biden's electric vehicle mandate will slaughter 117,000 U.S. auto manufacturing jobs, with workers in Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio among the hardest hit. And I hope United Auto Workers is listening to this, because I think you better endorse Trump, because I'm going to grow your business, and they are destroying your business. They are absolutely destroying your business. How people can vote for you just because it's an automatic Democrat vote. Look how they've decimated the car industry over the years. Mexico has 32 percent of the business that we used to have. It's ridiculous. But they didn't do it while I was president. I can tell you that. If Biden's assault is not stopped, American auto production will be totally dead. That's why I'm going to terminate these Green New Deal atrocities on day one. In my first term, I fought for auto workers like never before, canceling TPP, which was a disaster, ending the NAFTA nightmare. The NAFTA trade deal was the worst deal ever negotiated on trade. And renegotiating Obama's horrendous Korea trade deal made it a great deal from a horrible deal. I saved the American auto industry once, and now I will save it again. Every voter in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina needs to know, if you want to have an auto industry, you need to defeat Joe Biden. He's a corrupt president. And re-elect President Donald Trump. Thank you very much. We will take care of you. In a period of less than one week, Joe Biden accidentally admitted that we're sending cluster bombs to Ukraine because the United States is running out of ammunition. I don't know how that works, but that's what he said. Then he called up reserve forces to ship them to Europe, proving that we are running out of troops. And that's also a fact. We have very few people signing up to join our military. These actions reveal just what an insanely dangerous situation Biden and the demented warmongers have led us into. Less than three years ago, I'd fully rebuilt the United States military and steered America into such a strong global position that peace was breaking out all over the world. We had peace through strength. Twenty-nine months later, the arsenals are empty, the stockpiles are bare, the Treasury is drained, the ranks are being hollowed out, our country has been totally humiliated, and we have a corrupt, compromised President, crooked Joe Biden, who is dragging us into World War III. And that's what's happening on behalf of a nation that paid his family millions and millions of dollars in obvious bribes. All you have to do is take a look at how much China, how much Ukraine have paid the Biden family. It's a total disgrace and a very dangerous one. Under these circumstances, the notion that we would even consider admitting Ukraine into NATO at this time is completely unhinged. Joe Biden can't even walk up a flight of stairs on Air Force One, and he can't put two sentences together. The last thing that this incompetent administration should be doing is risking war with a nuclear-armed Russia or China or other countries. We have somebody that doesn't have a clue representing us. When I'm back in the White House on day one, we are returning to a foreign policy that puts 
America's interests first. America's chief interest in Eastern Europe is peace and stability. We want people to stop dying. This war should never have happened, but it is long past time to end the senseless death and destruction. The numbers are much worse than you're reading about or hearing about or than they're telling you. Many more people are dying than you have any idea, and certainly many more than they're willing to say. Then, as I work to again rebuild America's military strength and deterrence that Joe Biden so foolishly squandered, we need to take a long, hard look at defense procurement and our defense industrial base because it's been withered down to nothing. Given all the money we spend on the Pentagon, it's unacceptable that we would ever run out of ammunition or be unable to quickly produce the weapons needed. I will provide record funding for our military, just as I did four great years. If you think about what we were able to do, four great years of rebuilding our military, and we rebuilt it bigger and better and stronger than ever before. And now look at what's happening. We have no ammunition, as told stupidly by our President to the world so that everybody could know it. But I will also insist that we get more for every dollar spent because we're spending too much money foolishly and our prices are too high. In addition, I will ask Europe to reimburse us for the cost of rebuilding the stockpiles sent to Ukraine, which they should be doing now. But Joe Biden is too weak and too disrespected to even ask. The fact is that we've spent almost $200 billion in helping Ukraine, and Europe has spent just a tiny fraction of that amount. As Biden's call-up of reserve troops show, we also clearly need to address the embarrassing recruitment situation in the USA. Joe Biden's woke policies and political purges have repulsed many great patriots from serving. They don't want to serve in our military. Frankly, they disrespect our president. That's a big factor. I will restore the proud culture and honor traditions of America's armed forces, and there will be no Marxism allowed, no communism allowed, and we'll get rid of the fascists. Thank you very much. Governor Ron DeSantis shut down Florida businesses during COVID, drove away tourism, and used a mandate to keep Floridians from leaving their homes. Governor Ron DeSantis issues a wide-reaching mandate. The party's over in Florida. He wants you to forget, but Floridians remember. We can't stand another three months being shut down. Please, Governor, open us up. To actually shut us down it just made no sense. We did it for, for the bars and closed the bars down. Lockdown Ron. He failed Florida. Don't let him fail America. Crooked Joe Biden likes to pretend he stands up to Big Pharma. But, in fact, I was the only president in modern times who ever took on Big Pharma, and I took it head on. Biden canceled my tough on pharma policies the moment he had a chance. As president, I signed a historic executive order declaring that the United States government would pay the same price for pharmaceuticals as other foreign countries, and no more. We didn't want to pay any more. Can you imagine that? How simple would that be? This would have saved American patients billions and billions of dollars. But shortly after taking office, Joe Biden rescinded my executive order, stabbing patients and U.S. citizens, and especially our seniors, right in the back. For many years, Americans have been paying among the highest prices in the world for our prescription drugs while other countries negotiate sweetheart deals off the backs of America, paying vastly lower prices for the very same drugs from the very same companies. This amounts to a gigantic subsidy for foreign socialist welfare systems, courtesy of you and the American people. On day one of my new term, I will sign an executive order to end this global freeloading on American consumers for once and for all. Under my policy, the United States government will tell Big Pharma that we will only pay the best price they offer to foreign nations who have been taking advantage of us for so long. The United States is tired of getting ripped off. We've been ripped off by everybody for so many decades. We're tired of it. Not going to happen. They should have never rescinded my original executive order.
It just shows you the power of Big Pharma. But it will force Big Pharma to raise prices on foreign countries and reduce prices very substantially for American patients. It will deliver huge savings for seniors and for all American patients. Thank you very much. This was a very easy one. And this is an honor to tell you, because this was something that never should have happened. They should have never, ever rescinded my executive order. Joe Biden has run up record trade deficits, also known as losses, higher than any president in history by far. These gaping wounds are costing our country countless jobs and trillions and trillions of dollars in wealth. One of my top economic priorities will be to stem this bleeding and put American workers on a level playing field. It's about time. And I must say, I did it three years ago, and they were doing great. But that's been blown out the window by the Biden administration. But to that end, I will pass landmark legislation that will be known as the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. If India, China, or any other country hits us with a 100 or 200 percent tariff on American-made goods, we will hit them with the same exact tariff. In other words, 100 percent is 100 percent. If they charge us, we charge them an eye for an eye, a tariff for a tariff, same exact amount. One thing is going to happen. Probably they drop the tariff, but if they don't, that's okay. We'll take in plenty of money. Under the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act, other countries will have two choices. They will get rid of their tariffs on us, or they will pay us hundreds of billions of dollars, and the United States will make an absolute fortune. There will be no more unilateral economic surrender like we've done for many, many decades. This will especially help our great farmers in Iowa and other agricultural states, and it'll help our manufacturers all across the nation. We will be knocking down barriers to American farm products, American dairy products, steel, just about everything you can think of. From all around the world, they take advantage of us, but no more. We must have fairness and reciprocity. That's the word, reciprocity. They do it to us, we do it to them. This will be a key part of our strategy to return jobs and wealth to the United States and launch an economic boom that will lift up our middle class and eliminate our dependence on China and other countries. And it's something that has been waiting to happen for a long time. We have been the whipping post for everyone else. We have been a country that was disrespected on trade and, frankly, disrespected on just about everything. No more. The Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. Thank you.